And welcome once again to Live at the Library on Kempville campus. Beautiful venue, and this is the Singer-Songwriter Circle brought to you by Kempville Live Music Festival. And we have yet another four performers to basically explode your face and your ears. It's going to be a wonderful evening of music. Let me introduce the artists. We have Yvonne Leroux right there. We also have Tara Shannon. Then we have Northeastern. And then we also have Rob Kerr. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. And we are going to start things off with Yvonne LaRue. Had my nose to the ground stone all week long. I'm nothing but a wreck by the time I get home. Do to get real tired and a little hell bent. I'm gonna get down to it and do a little drinking. Call up my friends to meet me at a favorite spot where the beer is cold and the women are hot. Put a dollar in the jukebox and make it sing I'm gonna get down to it and do a little drinking I did a little drinking this weekend Just about fell off the deep end Friday was pretty rough And I was about ready to give it up Saturday I went a little crazy My mind's still a little hazy when I laid it all down this weekend Did a little drinking Fill up the cooler and take it to my best friend's place Throw some ice on top so it don't melt away A new work week is rolling around the bend Yes, yeah, Sunday's gone and I'm still drinking I did a little drinking this weekend Just about fell off the deep end Friday was pretty rough And I was about ready to give it up Saturday I went a little crazy My mind's still a little hazy When I laid it all down this weekend Did a little drinking Did a little drinking this weekend Just about fell off the deep end Friday was pretty rough And I was about ready to give it up Saturday I went a little crazy My mind's still a little hazy When I laid it all down this weekend Did a little drinking I went and laid it all down this weekend did a little drinking And that was Yvonne Leroux yeah. Live at the library right here on Kempville campus Thank you. Got my uh, lips salivating here <laughs> Want to get a little drink on Going to move it over to uh, Tara Shannon She's going to share her first tune with us right here the first ever singer songwriter circle. Thank you very much, sir. I love songwriter circles. My favorite, favorite thing to do. It's just, it's just so cool to share the ideas where your song came from. Nobody wants to hear me play guitar, so I have my best buddy back here, Wade Foster. Wade Foster is going to play for me. Um, this is a song I wrote a couple years back with my friend Marty, and um, and uh, it just you know talks about my life a little bit. I was sitting in my backyard with my cup of coffee. I was looking in my yard, and there were toys everywhere, and the place was a disaster. And I started to get frustrated and I was like, oh no, it's okay. These are my life signs. This is what my life looks like. And it was a song idea. And this is what came of it. Six hard shoes laying by the front door. 
Dinosaurs on the living room floor Pile of laundry about three feet high Life signs Toothpaste in the bathroom sink Cup of coffee he forgot to drink Tangled sheets where we loved last night Life signs They let me know I'm living The gift of one more day Is taken and is given But nothing I would change Cause they're my breath and my heartbeat They remind me I'm alive Oh, they're my life sign A couple of pounds I wish weren't there And looking in the mirror there's another gray hair And I just laugh at those laugh lines Life signs One more day is taken and there's given, but nothing I would change. Is there my breath and my heartbeat? They remind me I'm alive. Oh, they're my life sign. Tara Shannon, live at the library on Kempville campus. Yeah, give her a little bit more. Why not? Yes. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're the voice I try to sing along with and can, like many others. So thank you very much for that performance. Going to move it over to Northeastern. Take it away. Thank you so much. It's an incredible uh, privilege for me to be here tonight. I, just, I haven't played out live for a long time, as much of us haven't. The world's gone crazy in a short period of time. and We don't even know what's going to come out on the other side, but I do know this. It's the creators and the artists who are keeping the culture moving, and that's going to be fun. So I played a little song that I wrote with a couple friends of mine, Brian Fogelman and Barry Maydell out of British Columbia. Drives a Mercedes, goes a little crazy when she's running late. And it don't matter how much money she's got, oh, she can't buy the life she wants anyway. And David didn't make it as an actor, and now all he's after is a little more laughter. At the end of the day, he works down at the local lounge, serving drinks to those who haven't quite found their way. It don't matter where you've been or where you're going, the only thing you need to know. We all get lost, we all feel hurt, and we all lose sight of what it's all worth. And we all go crazy sometimes, and maybe that's why it all works. And 
Thomas made a promise on the day he lost his brother to his mother. Mom, I'm gonna take away this pain. But it's been four years and she's still in tears and it's hard as hell for her to even say his name. It don't matter where you've been or where you're going. The only thing you really need to know. We all get lost, we all feel hurt. And we all lose sight of what it's all worth. And we all go crazy sometimes And maybe that's why it all works And we all lose hope We all get scared And we all keep trying hard to get somewhere And we all go crazy sometimes And maybe that's what'll get us there Is scared that she won't marry the man she had in mind She's almost 35 and thinks she's running out of time And she's caught up in the clock of life And if only she could realize We all get lost, we all feel hurt And we all get scared of what it's all worth And we all go crazy sometimes And maybe that's why it all works crazy sometimes and maybe that's what'll get us there mm, yeah. great track from northeastern live at the library on kempville campus you chose a good night to tune in, that's for sure. <laughs> Going to finish off the first round with Rob Kerr. Take it away, my friend. Thanks. Uh, this is a tune I wrote uh, when I was living in Carleton Place, Ontario. It's about the area. It's called the Freight Train. Down on the Mississippi River Square, call home. Say them by your mind is this place has got a lot of soul. It's where the 15 brings you, it's where the 7 takes you on. Oh, down all the Mississippi rivers where it call home. No, oh, that old freight train don't come to town anymore. Miss the sound of the whistle blowing through this town, and I hear people say it's not the same anymore since that old freight train left this town. It's part of that our county is built on limestone. I heard a spaceship crashed here a long, long time ago There was a man in town, his name was Arthur Roy Brown Oh, and as the story goes, he found the Red Baron and shot him down Shot him down, shot him down to the ground A freight train don't come to town anymore Now miss the sound of the whistle going through this town and here people say it's not the same anymore since that old freight train left this town we'll take the back roads down to black bass bay It's where they're lit and they're niggered up and ready to play Down at the waterfront the pubs are singing drinks all day mm. I mean to try to hide but it just can't stay away Stay away so I stay in that old freight train Don't come to town anymore the sound of the whistle goes through the rain is pouring down And this little town just ain't the same anymore Since that old freight train left this town
Rob Kerr, live at the library on Kempville campus. Part of the singer-songwriter circle, brought to you by the Kempville Live Music Festival. My name is J-Man, and we are now going to speak to the semicircle, at least, of artists that we have performing for us tonight. And we're going to start off with Yvan Leroux. And I'm really curious about your influences. I know that you like the rock, the country, the blues. There's a whole bunch in there. But where does it derive from? Uh, my, I come from a musical family, and my uncles, and um, uh, uh, they played a lot of Merle Haggard, George Jones, old, old country like that. So I was kind of brought up when I started playing guitar on that kind of music. And then my uh, older brothers, um, they, they were into rock and roll, so I, I got to listen to ACDC, and some of the first music I ever played was CCR. And then... Um, I'm a big blues fan, so I like a lot of blues music. Uh, so, you know, I just try, try and intertwine all that uh, together when, when I write a song. And if I had to pick from someone current, who would be an influence? Oh, I like the Brothers Osborne right now. I'm really digging their stuff, so I, uh, I like that. And what is it about them that you see and what you do? Uh, they've got that rock and roll edgy vibe to them, you know, so I, I like that. All right. Uh, with a country feel. Do a little drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Tara Shannon, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Good. You're obviously a very soulful singer. Well, thank you. And I'm curious what your influences are as well, because I can imagine they come from a lot of different places. Yeah, all over the place. I think right now, uh, as a songwriter, I think Laurie McKenna probably is where what I'm diving into the most right now. Singing-wise and soulfulness, I mean, everything. It's kind of funny because as a kid growing up, I always gravitated to, you know, the big female vocalists, you know, like Celine or Barbara Streisand, all the ones that go by one name those ones. Um, and, but I had, um, my family was very musical too. And my cousins were appalled that I listened to top 40, appalled. And so they would force feed me Rush, Yes, Led Zeppelin. And they would explain Pink Floyd, this is real music. And so, <laughs> so that's how I got the influence of the rock and roll, the rock part of it. And uh, I just, for me, I just really love a great lyric, the simplicity of an amazing lyric. And I think if you can pull the soul out of the feeling behind that lyric, um, that's what I try to do with my voice. So I'm curious with the big artists that you named, mm -hmm. the one namers, Adele's, yeah. right? <laughs> Things like that. Yeah. And when you have a voice like that, it's obviously very easy to get sucked into doing what other people do, mm -hmm. what would be the one piece of advice that you'd give out to a singer or something that you've just learned yourself to where you can stand out, be original, have your own voice, and still have those as just influences? That's a really great question, actually, because um, I have a record label, so we see a lot of artists that come through there. And, you know, often people fall into sort of the mimic singing thing where they're just, like, emulating somebody. And it can be really hard to sort of decondition that and get them in touch with themselves, their authentic self. And the thing about singing is you're very vulnerable when it's your voice. There's nothing between you, your soul, who you are, and the audience. So often people develop these styles to, as a protective mechanism almost to feel safe. So that's the advice I would say. If you're feeling terrified, you're doing it right. <laughs> That's awesome. That's, <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you got to get out of your comfort zone, Absolutely. right? That's when you're growing. Mm -hmm. Northeastern, how are you doing? Good yourself, sir. Oh, that's I should probably talk in the mic. Yeah, it helps. It amplifies things. Well, yeah, you sound like you should be in radio. That's <laughs> good. I like it. So you're obviously a storyteller. Okay. Uh, or are you not? I mean, no, I, I can am. tell I, through I, your songs I, that I, that's I very much you that, yeah. uh, what you're all about. You're going to be a fun one tonight. <laughs> uh, Terrific. So great sound, great story, and... Before we got recording tonight, and you kind of touched on it right before we got started, the impact on COVID and the pandemic mm -hmm. and what that's done to your soul, and I'm sure 
there's a lot of like-minded individuals around sure. you in this space as well that yeah. haven't been able to play. How has that affected you personally? Well, you know, the truth is a lot of us have ch chased it online. We, we went and we, we tried to play online and see if we could generate some kind of feeling because it's, a, it's an addiction being in front of a bunch of people and performing something that you have inside you. It's sharing, it's creative, it's, it, it's a flow of yourself. But that was not only, was it feel like it was taken from us, but of course, th that the impact that it had on the creative mind, I personally, you know, word here to everyone is really tough, really tough. I had a, probably the most difficult time I've ever had in my world for this last year as a performer, as an artist, as a mentor. I teach and, and sort of give people, hey, maybe you should try this or try this. It's difficult to do that when you're feeling like you're, you're stuck yourself and you can't get out of this sort of bubble. So um, this is amazing to, to be out and performing. You know, I wasn't expecting this even a week and a half, two weeks ago before I, I wasn't expecting it. And, and it, it invigorated me and it definitely is adding a new fire just because again, this is inside us, right? We're not gonna not do this. We're gonna do this if anyone pays us or not pays us. It's just unfortunate that they've stopped people from coming to see it. And so it's hurt a lot of people. But know this, I think the biggest thing about it is that we're gonna come out of it because this is what triggers all of the art. If you go on something like TikTok or Instagram, you're gonna see all these incredible artists that are just on fire. Why? They're stuck inside for multiple hours a day. What are they gonna do? They gotta create. So look what's coming. We're gonna see this massive boom of cool creative explosion. That's something I'm excited about. Stoked for it. It's gonna be fun. That's a great perspective. Rob, Rob Kerr, get the last name in there too. Hey. Yeah, I'm over here. How you doing? Hey, how are you? Not too bad. So tell me a little bit more about you and your influences. I know that you have quite a bit. Sorry, I started off kind of vague, uh, but I know that you do have some very specific influences because we had spoken about that. What would be some of the ones that have the most power over what it is that you do day to day when it comes to your music? Wow. Um, I like music. I like all of it. If it tickles my ear, I like it. If it influences me, if it makes me want to pick up my guitar and make music. Um, okay. I guess some of the stuff that I've been listening to a lot lately is uh, some Sting, some Mumford and Sons, old Mumford and Sons. Okay. Like that. And what might be the one type of influence that might shock people? <laughs> you said there's some strange ones. Would there be something that people just would not expect it to like? Like, are you a Backstreet Boys fan or something like that? I don't know. Just give it to me. Be honest. I've asked something like this before and I get no love. Uh, I'm a closet ABBA fan. Okay. I like all of ABBA, anything they do. I, 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 like, I like pop music. I like Timberlake and all right. that stuff. Yeah, I like music. Well, it's like the rappers, right? Rap and hip hop, they have a strong appreciation, a lot of them, for funk, for blues, yeah. uh, for old school rock and roll. So it's great that, you know, you puffed out your chest, kind of, and, and you put it out there. Yeah. ABBA. ABBA. Really? Yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, I, can, <laughs> I can play some ABBA tunes. <laughs> All right, and now we're going to get started with round number two of Live at the Library on Kempville Campus, the Singer-Songwriter Circle, brought to you by Kempville Live Music Festival. Yvonne Leroux, please, once again, take it away. In a state, in a state, where are you going to take me today? I'm southbound, headed down a long stretch of highway You're gonna take me back to my home, that's where I wanna be In a state, in a state, where are you gonna take me today? Radio, radio, what you gonna play me? A cool rock number with a sweet little melody. I hope it's something I know so I can sing along. Radio, radio, what you gonna play me? I've been on this road too long Away from my home But if everything works out right I'm gonna be back home
Baby, baby, how you gonna love me? Soft and sweet, oh, wild and crazy. I hope you hold me tight and never let me go. Baby, baby, don't stop loving me. I said in a state, in a state, where are you gonna take me today? I'm southbound, headed down a long stretch of highway. You're gonna lead me back to my home, that's where I wanna be. In a state, in a state, where are you gonna take me today? I said, where you gonna take me today you're listening to live at the library on Kempville campus and that was Ivan Roux and we're going to move it on once again to Tara Shannon. Thank you. That was great. It's awesome. Um, so I took a really long break uh, from music to raise my family, and I have a ton of children, so it took a ton of time to get back to it. And when I was making this record that I thought would be the last record, just to sort of finish this thing I had never finished, uh, I really, really wanted an old-fashioned, good old-fashioned country cheating song on the song, on the record. Because I, I want, it had a country vibe, sort of. And I was like, we have to have a cheating song on this record. So I wrote this with my friend James Gregory. Uh, he came up with a hook, and he just called me, and he's like, he has six kids, I have seven kids. And literally, we were, like, hiding in our houses. He's in Nashville, and I was here. I was hiding in my closet, so the kids wouldn't bug me, and he's down uh, hiding from his family. We're just trying to get the song finished. <laughs> and we made it in time for the record. Um, so this was on my unfinished record. It's called Take This Rock and Roll. Get up off your knees, boy, your too little is a little too late. Your lying, cheating heart is going down today. Cause I know, I know you've been messing around. Don't you know they spread the word in a gospel town? Since the day I said I do, you've been swearing that you don't. You're nothing but the blues and I need a little more soul. Baby, take this rock and roll Get on out that door, yeah You best grab those blue suede shoes Cause I'll be getting one, all your money To the whole show When I'm done with you And I know that you know it's gonna stay You better run before I cut your little guitar string Since the day I said I do, you've been swearing that you don't, you're nothing but the blues, and I need a little more soul, yeah, so baby, take this rock and roll, well, I'm done being spun like an old 45, so take your broken record and your little B-side and get gone. Rock and roll, yeah, baby. Take this rock and roll. On second thought, I'll keep this rock, and you can roll. Go on, get gone. The ending. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> My daughter on the recording says, bye-bye. <laughs> My youngest daughter. And that was Tara Shannon, live at the library on Kempville campus. Thank you very much. She had to get in that cheating song, and I'm glad you did. It's yes. a great track. <laughs> and now it's time to toss it over to Northeastern. Uh, a couple months ago, I was uh, not in a good place. Uh, 
So I called up my buddy, my buddy Rob over here on the panel. I said, dude, I'm coming over and today we're gonna be writing a song. See, I wasn't able to travel back to British Columbia, which is my home. I go there every single year, and this year I wasn't able to go back. And so it kind of helped put an idea together. And Rob came up with a good title, and we locked down. This is called Counting the Headlights. We jumped into the car, filled it up, and we just kept driving. Two of us hid it out in the dark. You'd be the co-pilot, work the radio when it gets quiet. Plan the way to go, and when you get tired, you can lean in and close your eyes. Oh, hey, oh, I can take the wheel to morning. If you wanna sleep right now Or I can find a place to stop For a little while Oh, hey, oh I can hear the West Coast calling What if we stayed up All night Counting headlights Counting the headlights Ten hours to Manitoba In my father's 82 Corolla Feet on the dash, head on my shoulder Foot on the gas, pushing the motor A little stop in Winnipeg Grab some food and we stretch our legs Then it's back in the car, off like a jet Trying to keep up with the speed of the sunset Oh, hey, oh, oh, I can drive until morning If you want to sleep right now Oh, I can find a place to stop For a little while Oh, hey, oh, I can hear the West Coast calling What if we stayed up all night Can headlights Headlights. And we got a couple thousand miles to go Two of us on the open road Windows down in the nighttime cold Keeping us awake And we got a couple thousand miles to go Counting the headlights Me and you can just keep driving Counting the headlights You and me can just keep driving We jumped to the car, filled it up and we just kept driving Two of us hid it out in the dark Northeastern live at the library on Kempville campus Thank you very much And passing it on to the gentleman that helped him write that song Rob Kerr so Now I'm going to play a song that North helped me write I had just broken up with this girl. Things were awful. I went over to North's house and he pulled these lyrics out of me. And we uh, had this little rift. And he just, after a day of working on it, we had this. It's called, What Do I Do Now? I'm standing in a downpour. I can feel the lightning strike. This October rain has found me on your gravel road tonight. Not a car I see is stopping. And the tail lights in the dark. They fade into the distance. It's never been this hard. Oh 
I break? What do I do now? Leave it all behind me. Wait for you to find me. To stay in work it out. What do I do now? All the miles that lay before me. Up hill all the way. And we're both tired of talking about the things that we can't change. Oh, we're both tired of talking about the things that we can change. What do I do now? Turn and walk away. Time another car goes by, you're inside, I'm out here waiting. Every time another car goes by, you're inside, I'm out here waiting. Even though I want to say goodbye, you're inside, I'm out here waiting. I'm out here waiting. So what do I do? What do I do now? 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 Rob Kerr, live at the library on Kempville campus. Singer Songwriter Circle, in effect, brought to you by Kempville Live Music Festival. And I'm just going to keep it right here with you, Rob. And that's a good song. That's deep. Yeah. That's deep. And I can almost hear a duet in there somewhere as well. Maybe you can hop on that, Tara. That's a, that's a <laughs> Yeah, I can feel that one. It's yeah. a lovely one. And I want to go back to the fact that you said that this is something that you co-wrote with a friend, and it's obvious, I mean, if it wasn't before, with lyrics like that, that you have to be vulnerable, you have to be transparent, and yeah. somebody else Real, helped you write that. Yeah, so There's how is true it story. that... true story. All that stuff really happened, well, uh, miles all the way, and, and, but yeah, that, that's a true story. Right, and so what was the most difficult part about writing that song? The honesty. <laughs> Yeah, the, the being vulnerable, the the saying, "I'm, I'm stuck, I'm, I'm hurt." I'm... And what made you want to share that story in a song? Imagine taking something that was awful and making something beautiful out of it. That's the perfect answer. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Rob. I appreciate that. Cheers. Northeastern. Well, that says a lot about you, right there. <laughs> well, you know, if you're not writing with your heart, if you're a songwriter and you're not writing with your heart, you're probably not doing it right. And, and you're, you're trying for the wrong reasons. You've got to unleash what's actually real inside yourself. And, and I think everybody knows that as they write their favorite songs. If you ask somebody, what's the best song you've ever written? It won't be the one that's the, probably the hit. Maybe the one that paid all the bills, but it'd be the one that they wrote because something happened to them, a tragedy, a painful thing, a breakup, a, a love story, something amazingly powerful, milestone. That's what they wrote that made them feel that way. And that's the the gift we have as writing songs is to be able to not just express that, but for us, 
honestly, I think this is what's kept me sane throughout the years, is it allowed me to get rid of what it is that's paining me and hurting me and causing me conflict and causing me this, why am I a chaotic mind? And it's allowing me to visit it. Instead of it being something that consumes me all the time, I can go visit my pain songs and say, oh, I'm mad right now, I'll go sing my mad song, or I'm sad, I'll go sing my sad song. And, and it allows me to revisit those emotions without feeling like they're gonna swarm and overwhelm me. That's for me personally. But I witness that when I work with other writers. It's kind of what they're going through too, and they're looking to get that truth of themselves out and I don't know, I just, I, I hope we can find it together. If we, if we get to the heart of that moment, we'll find it, 100%, we'll find mm -hmm. it. So. And do you find that you're generally using that same type of inspiration when you write songs for someone else, or are you, or write with someone else, or is it something, listen, if I'm not feeling it here, I just, I can't help you. If I'm writing with other writers who have an agenda about the song itself, I personally, I don't check out, but I definitely take a step backwards and I look at what's the point of writing the tune and what is it about? Is this song that's heartfelt to me? Is this a good idea? It's a good idea. The other writers may not be linking into it as emotionally, but they're throwing in lyrical content, which is great and it can come up with something amazing. But I tend to, from a really heartfelt song, I have to be... I have to be in the room with the person. I have to know that their heart beats at the same speed of mine sometimes and that we're on the same page. And if we're not, when a fresh writing, it's still difficult to do. I personally have exercised that with a lot of artists and gone, let's get the real of them. Tara was speaking about it earlier, about finding someone's real voice. The honesty of that comes out in them being not afraid to say, here I am, naked in my world, please. Mm -hmm. and, and if you really have loved anybody on this planet, it's probably them being that because they're just, that truth is, is, an, is uh, it, it, it's gravity for all of us. It right. pulls us towards it. So tell the truth. Well, Tara, maybe you'd like to speak on that a little bit further as well. And I know with country music, there are a lot of artists that don't write their own music, mm -hmm. you know, to where they can kind of just pick something that resonates with them. Yeah. How do you find that works in your sphere? Are you the type of person that can get just as deep into a song that maybe you didn't have a piece of? Or do you find for you to really be able to get the grit in there, it has to be something that you're singing from experience? Um, it's funny because, you know, I started as a, an indie singer-songwriter and you just, you write from what Nick North is talking about. You know, it's like I would bleed all over the piano. Here's my pain. Here's my suffering. <laughs> Here's yeah. my song. One thing that I have learned in becoming, uh, learning more of the craft and becoming, you know, a, a professional at songwriting is when you're writing to try to give somebody else the opportunity to feel that in the song, that's a really tough thing. And um, I love the challenge of that. But like North is describing, sometimes, you know, if you're under the gun and you've been put in a room and you're writing with writers and you have three hours and you have a pitch sheet and you're trying to write for major artists that are cutting, you know, it depends who you're in the room with, but it can it can very easily kind of go in, in the chasing mode where you're chasing the idea of what somebody could cut or what could make it on radio or whatever, the business side of things. So for me, I have to have the connection to something real in the hook of what we're trying to say or the title. And then I, and then the, the sort of the formulaic or the formatting or that kind of part I can get on board with because you have to make money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to truly try to get somebody to cut your song to make money. But I, I'm the same. I have to feel it. When I'm writing for myself, like I, I write a song and then I decide if it's a Tara Shannon song mm -hmm. or if it's a song that I'm going to pitch. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, I like the challenge of writing from all different angles. When I'm hired to write a song for a specific thing, I like that challenge too because you're really trying to, pull out what is that organization trying to say or what, you know, and then try to help them say it in music. So I, I get the opportunity to write from lots of different angles and I love it all and I love the challenge, but nothing will ever beat me alone, my piano, at my piano, in my studio, mm -hmm. nobody listening and just, you know, bleeding all over the piano. And Some people the, may never hear that. <laughs> and those are the songs no one ever gets to hear, truth yeah. be told, because those are the ones that they're, they're the ones where you're bawling your eyes out and you're going, yeah, I'm never going to share yeah. that, but it's true. How about crying on the piano? It's less graphic. <laughs> <laughs> Yvonne, I missed you, brother. But I'm still here. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> all right. Now, you were telling me something really interesting when we were sitting at the table before we started recording in regards to farming. Oh, You'll have to you'll have to spark my memory on that. What did I say? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. You were saying that before. You were very busy doing dairy farming. Yeah, and you got out of that so you yeah. could focus more on your music. Yeah. Now I'm curious because it's a very 
tedious job. It's a difficult job. And thank you very much for doing it, by the way. How much of that time that you're spending working away do you find maybe contributes to at least being able to come up with the music, or is that a total disconnect? Yeah, I, I don't think that's, that's connected for me. I, I get a little idea in my head on a song, and it, I, I can't write a song in a day. It's going to take me a few weeks to dole out a song, maybe even six months or, or more. So um, maybe the idea just keeps growing in my mind, more fictional, uh, more than... Uh, just actual uh, things that are happening to me, you know, so. Right. I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> no, it does answer my question. <laughs> Absolutely. So when you're that busy and you do have that little bit of a birth child in regards to a song mm. and you don't have the time, how cool. do you go about growing an idea like that to where it becomes a full song? Well, you, you got to make the time, I guess. You, you got to find some little spots in the day that you can write a few, even if it's just a verse or a couple lines to a chorus or a hook, and you just got to keep going back to that song and, and, and see if you can finish it. And, right. Uh, that, that's why I say I, I can't do one in a day. Right. It's going to take me a little bit of time, and, and that's because I have just a, a small amount of time to work on it. So. Any little quirks? Sometimes you hear about musicians, you know, maybe singing a couple of bars into their cell phones or something like that and coming back uh, to it a little bit later on. Sometimes in the tractor when I'm working and doing springs work, I'll get some great ideas. There and, yeah, we go. You got you to take <laughs> your cell phone and, and, and shove it on there before you forget. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. For sure. <laughs> oh, that's wicked. Well, thank you very much for sharing. I appreciate that. And we're going to bring it right back to you. All right. Uh, it's time for you to perform once again. It's live at the library on Kempo campus. Yvon Leroux, take it away. Full song, I cut down Nashville, and I just uh, released it uh, in January. It's called Hard to Love. I've got a premonition Things ain't gonna go my way It's gonna break me down It's taking me day by day I've got a bad feeling Creeping up and down my spine You're gonna leave me, honey And it's weighing heavy on my mind You're a hard woman to love I've tried and I tried and it was never enough I gave you my heart and now you're tearing it up You're a hard woman to love Oh, you're a hard, hard woman to love It's a chain reaction Of things gone wrong in the past It's a lack of love and affection A kick of me right in the ass it keeps me wondering If there's something that I could have done It keeps me searching for an answer But I still haven't found one You're a hard woman to love I tried and I tried and it was never enough I gave you my heart and now you're tearing it up You're a hard woman to love Oh, you're a hard, hard woman to love Say it ain't so, don't let me go You're tearing us apart I've got a bad feeling Creeping up and down my spine You gonna leave me, honey? Cause it's weighing heavy on my mind Hey, you're a hard woman to love I tried and I tried and it was never enough I gave you my heart and now you're tearing it up You're a hard woman to love Oh, you're a hard, hard woman to love Hey, baby You're a hard woman to love at the library on Kempville campus. Great track. And you know what? I'm going to go right with it since you're here. <laughs> and I want to ask about that tune specifically. And you had some help with that one. Was that written in Nashville? No. 
I, I wrote it and, and sent the tracks down, and it was chosen to, to get produced down there. Okay, and you had some CCMA award-winning help there with a gentleman by the name of Danik. Danik DePel from Vibe Recordings. He was my producer, and he's a two-time uh, CCMA uh, Producer of the Year nom nominee. And he's a, he's a terrific producer to work with, just uh, the greatest guy on the, on the planet. Right, and the pace of that tune was a little bit different. Was that one written specifically for radio? Is that what you're it, looking for out of that track? Yeah, yeah, it was it was commer commercial version, so uh, that's what it was, was made for. Right, really catchy, and thank you for sharing it. All right, thank you. All right, we're going to move it on to Tara Shannon, right here, live at the library. That was great. I love that. I can't wait to hear what Danik did with it. Um, yeah, so we're going to do this one. There's an, if you've ever had the chance to go to... Nashville, because the songwriter round really was born there. The Bluebird is kind of like where this all start, started. So now there's the listening room, Bluebird, and you see this more and more. If you ever get a chance to go, it's amazing. And what are sort of the unspoken rules is you can try songs that you've just done and never performed before. And everybody is supposed to be very kind, even if you have to start and stop, <laughs> you have to stop and start again. So I'm going to do that today. This one is like a couple of weeks old. And... Um, it's an example of a song that I wrote that's probably not going to be one of mine, but we'll pitch it and hopefully get somebody to pick it up. Um, yeah, so I thought I would be brave and try something that I literally have not sang. Five people have heard this song. So this is called Perfect World, and I thought I'd share it because what you were saying, North, about you know this pandemic and what it's done to creators, everybody, and particularly creators, you know, when we, as music creators, we need that connection. You know, it's just part of who we are. It's what keeps us going. And I think all of us, everybody's been processing what's happened over the last year. And it's kind of given us some time to slow down and sort of take it all in and reevaluate. You know, how are we living? You know, how do we live as humans? Is this how we want to keep moving forward? Um, so sometimes ideas for songs come from that state of mind. And this was one of those. It's called Perfect World. Wouldn't it be perfect world If we could all agree to disagree And just let it be Try a little harmony Wouldn't it be perfect world If we used sticks and stones But building homes, not breaking bones So why don't we I ain't asking for a perfect world I ain't asking for a perfect world But wouldn't it be perfect? No, it wouldn't take a whole lot to change things If only everyone would decide we could change the way we're living Change the whole damn way we're spinning around The truth that all it takes is to try I ain't asking for a perfect world But wouldn't it be perfect world? Wouldn't it be perfect world? If every child was safe outside both day and night and they never heard inside I ain't asking for a perfect world No, I ain't asking for a perfect world But wouldn't it be perfect? No, it wouldn't take a whole lot to change Change the way we're living Change the whole damn way We're spinning around the truth That all it takes is to try I ain't asking for a perfect world 
I ain't asking for a perfect world Wouldn't it be perfect world? And that was Tara Shannon. Thank, Thank you very you. much for that track. Thank you. How did it feel singing that in front of more than people than you, <laughs> more people than you ever sang it in front of before? Uh, it's, it's weird when you try a song for the first time in front of people because you can feel the exchange of energy that's happening in a lyric and the way you wrote it and the way you you hoped it would fall. And you're, all, I'm always analyzing. So I'm like, oh, that phrasing works, but I should probably try this one. You know, I'm still in my head about it, but you were all very kind. Thank you. <laughs> Have you done some public speaking? I have, why? You had that I catch you by surprise? Yes. <laughs> like this is an I, I interview process. You, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've, do, I, I've done public speaking, why? Right, well, because I thought that was very interesting in regards to being a songwriter, mm -hmm. right, where you're speaking a lot from personal experience and then you're also doing this public speaking and I did some research in regards to some of the things that you speak on and these yeah. are obviously matters of the heart for you, things that you're passionate about. Yeah. And I'm curious how much of your music bleeds into the personal speaking and how much of that personal speaking bleeds into your music. Oh, I would say it's probably intertwined almost, yeah. And that's the feedback I get from my shows because I really, I share a lot of my personal stories, what I go through personally. And if I'm asked, if I'm speaking at an engagement for a specific event, I'll tie music in somehow, you know? So for me, it's just woven into the fabric of who I am, so you can't really separate it if I'm mm -hmm. talking about it. And I just feel very, very, very blessed to be able to do that. Okay, thank you very much. I was gonna ask if you had to do one or the other, which one would you pick, mm. but that's not fair. Yeah, I, don't, I, would, I would write songs. Really? Oh, hands oh, wow. down. Okay, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even if I had to, like if I was given the choice to sing, record, perform, or songwrite, I would never give up the songwriting okay. all day long. Great. Thank you. North agrees. <laughs> yeah. like North, two thumbs up. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Northeastern, time for your third track. Looking forward to it. My third track. This is going to be fun for me. Um, haven't played this song live very many places, but I'm going to definitely do some wonders with it. You know, here's something that I noticed. Um, I see pictures of people online, but I don't know if that's what they really look like. I saw a buddy of mine the other day. His hair was long. He had a beard. And then I saw him actually in public, and I didn't, we didn't even say hi, but there was no hair, no beard. And I wondered how long that photo had been, you know, waiting in the wings for him. And that happens to a lot of us. We're going to put our selfie up there, and we go, yeah, that's good, except for let's just brighten those eyes and maybe stretch that face a little bit <laughs> whatever makes us look a little bit better. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing people in person again. But in the meantime, we always have online. It's a regular day, it's a quarter past eight, missing cream for my coffee and I'm running late. The car barely starts cause there's only fumes in the tank. I hit the drive through that's when I choose the Egg McMuffin with the hash browns too Only to find out on the drive out that they fucked that up too Thanks, grab some gas, pay with cash Then up on the freeway I'm in dead last For the longest line of brake lights I've ever seen Damn, I won't sweat it, no I won't let it get me down Cause I'll just edit all this ordinary out If you follow me if you follow me, you'll see me standing beside a souped-up car Pretending it's mine, looking like a rock star While all my posts get at least a thousand likes My hair, it looks great, my teeth, they look straight Kinda like Betty White, I never age It's good to be alive in this online paradise Don't hate my, don't hate my hashtag Picture perfect life Picture perfect life Five-star food's got just the right mood And to tell you the truth, the lighting was sweet It took like 27 shots to get it right mm, But I waited too long, the heat was all gone The meat it got dry and the rolls were like stone And it tasted like shit, but it's more than a hit To my friends online Where I'm wearing my brand new shirt That no one can see, I ain't wearing no pants And that's fine by me Cause all my posts get at least a thousand likes 
My hair, it looks great. My teeth, they look straight. Kinda like Betty White. I never age. It's good to be alive in this online paradise. Don't hate my, don't hate my hashtag. Picture perfect life. Picture perfect life. You'll see me strolling somewhere out on the ocean. You don't even know that this was taken years before. So why don't you keep on scrolling and you'll see a million more. Where I got a drink in my hand, ass in the sand, a pretty good tan, all thanks to an app. And all my posts get at least a thousand likes. My hair, it looks great, my teeth, they look straight Kinda like Betty White, I never age It's good to be alive in this online paradise Mmm, it's good to be alive in this online paradise Oh, it's good to be alive in this online paradise Don't hate my, don't hate my hashtag Picture perfect life Oh, picture perfect life Thank you. Northeast and live at the library make me feel a little self-conscious. You've been looking at my Instagram? I did, actually, man. You've been creeping me? <laughs> Do you mind me talking about your kids? Not at all, man. Talk about them. Okay. I talk about them all the time. Now, I'm going to ask because not to say that you're not a hip dude. I'm sure you are. But, I mean, the kids, they're down with the lingos and the hashtags and the social media. Yeah. So the exposure to that outside of you just being a dad... Does a lot of that come from them kind of oh. being up with the latest, the latest trends, uh, the TikTok dances, I'm sure, the, the daps or whatever they are? The yeah, dips, it's the crazy. Daps. Yeah, you're, you're, you're definitely hitting it. I mean, if we're not grabbing what's around us, you know, and my kids are, and you, you have kids as well, we, you know, those who have kids, you realize that they are pretty much the best TV show you've probably ever watched if you can sit back and not get afraid that they're going to run to the corner of the table, you know? And so as you, as you get, as they get older, I always found that, you know, the oldest one, it was like terror. And then of course the youngest one, juggle those knives. It's all good, buddy. You're going to be fine. And so, but every single one of them has come up with something uh, along the path that has inspired tunes for me, has inspired, inspired songs, not always for good things. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, like, and because your father or your parent and I don't, know sh I don't know shit about being a parent, and, and yet I have six kids. So I'm doing the best that I possibly can, and at every time I always find they humble me very much, and I realize that I have grown more uh, from them than they've probably ever grown from me. Right. You guys should put together a big band. I think that's like 12 or 13 right there. My God. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Good work. <laughs> and I think it's really important, and I love that song, uh, number one, because it's very catchy. Uh, it's an enjoyable tune, but I think it's so important for people to embrace the present. And so many people don't want to do that. And if I could offer any advice as being a former radio announcer of almost 20 years is don't be afraid to go towards the new, right? Don't be like, oh, well, I used to really like cassettes. I don't want CDs. Oh, I don't want the CDs. I want MP3s. Embrace what's new, and you never know what type of audience can pop up for you there as well. Well, that's a fantastic point, and I only mention it because if any artist out there isn't on TikTok, get on TikTok. I did never thought, I thought that'd be dumb. I joined it like two months ago. I got like 6,000 followers. People are writing me every day, and it's a, it's a medium for artists, and, it's, and there's, there are opportunity. One's going to open a door for you. Keep trying everything, man. Never stop fighting for the fight. And creating. Number one hashtag? I don't know. Okay, where do I go? Oh, sorry, <laughs> learn on TikTok. For me, I teach on TikTok and that's where, you know, giving back, just give back something. Awesome. Okay. All right, now we're about to finish this evening off. We're going to do so after yet another guitar switch. So much love between these two. 20 years between us, I think. 20 yeah. years friends, right? Yeah, but how many kids... Yeah, <laughs> I got no kids. Oh, he's my he's my seventh. Your your right, you yeah, have yeah. enough I'm between like you two for everyone else in the room. <laughs> All right, and it's time for the last performance of the evening, and it comes to us courtesy of Rob Kerr. Song uh, is about not feeling okay, but uh, faking it. 
<laughs> this is called feeling okay. I need to confess I'm standing in the freak and I'm breathing it all in. I wish you could see this. To see them and I know right down the fields. Some dead in the street. Oh, come on, release me. Oh, even now it's pulling. I don't know where to go. I've been here. I've been here feeling okay. Feeling okay. Feeling okay. Go. The game that you're playing We need the show Wish you could see this See them and line on Right down the fields Some dead in the street Whoa, come on Rob Kerr, and sticking with social media and hashtags and all that kind of stuff, we're Facebook friends. We are Facebook yeah. friends. Yeah, and you look just like your picture. I do. Well, do I look like me? You totally look like All right, picture. that's good. That's a nice shirt, too. That's a <laughs> Thank you. Shirt. Yeah, a little birdies on there. My yeah. mom got me this shirt. That's, your mom has good stuff. Right? Doesn't she? Yeah, yeah fantastic. Nice. Round of applause for my mom. Yeah, hey. Hey, yeah. moms. Oh, don't cut that out. <laughs> don't cut that out. That's gold. <laughs> So I want to talk about two things with you. Number okay. one would be the hat. Usually there's a story behind the hat. Why do you wear the hat? Plus two to charisma. Yeah? <laughs> it adds plus that. two to charisma. This makes me easier to talk to, I think. It's part of your personality. Yeah. It's part of the... We'll take it off for a second? No, you can't do that. Do you want to do no. that with it? No, no. Okay, exactly, because then you have the, like, the hat head thing the going hat on. Head, yeah. And through us being Facebook friends, mm -hmm. which basically makes us family, right? Uh, I also watch some of your stuff. Uh oh. And I notice that you like to do covers, mm -hmm. and I also find it very interesting that some of the covers that you do wouldn't be traditional covers, like some grungy stuff, mm -hmm. but with an acoustic feel. Mm -hmm. Is there a challenge in that for you? No. 
No, I, I played acoustic guitar my whole life. I, I didn't really pick up the electric. Um, so, but I like some heavy music. So, mm -hmm. being brought up, I was listening to Metallica and playing Metallica on the right. uh, acoustic. So, I like all sorts of music, heavy stuff, soft stuff. Yeah, and what do you find to be the most challenging tune to take that's heavy or what would consider to be heavier and turning it into something maybe a little bit more melodic? Hardest song to do that to. Or uh, I, I, I play a Tool song. Oh, yeah? That would uh, be pretty good. It's, uh, I put a little Celtic twist on it and do a Tool tune. That sounds pretty rad. I'll show it to you later. <laughs> yeah, you will. That's great. Thank you, man. And that wraps up another singer, songwriter circle right here live at the library on Kempville campus brought to you by Kempville Live Music Festival. I'd like to thank our four artists once again for performing and you in the back as well. Wade. His name, please. Wade Foster. Wayne Foster, fantastic. Thank you so much uh, for contributing. And thank you very much for tuning in live at the library. I hope you enjoy the series and hope to bring a whole bunch more great stuff to you just like that. Big shout out to Bob and Karen as well uh, for making that happen. You take care, be well, and love simply because you can.